Hi folks, Glyn Jewis here with another tutorial for you, but this one's been recorded especially for those of you who've signed up for the newsletter. So if you're watching this, a big thank you from me. So just a little bit of a quick story then. This is a, a picture that I did a while back now uh, with a friend of mine uh, who's a bit of a gun nut to be honest with you. And um, We did it in the studio, it was shot against a grey seamless and the background that you can see with all this um, sort of road surface, the mountains, the sky and this little Chinook helicopter over here that was all composited later on in Photoshop, and I think there's maybe six or seven pictures that went into making the one final image. But what I want to show you today is just quickly, it's how I can get rid of this shadow down the bottom here of the picture, because uh, this was shot in the studio, like I said, and I've got to be honest with you, it's a bit of a hands up now. When we first were doing this photo shoot, we were only working at three quarter length, so we had rim lights to either side and some light to the front, but then we finished off with uh, some full length shots. Now we did later on turn off one of those side lights but it just so happens that as we first started doing the photo shoot the best ones were at the start and that's when I'd actually forgotten to turn it off. Uh, hence why we've got this odd shadow at the bottom here because if there's one sun we're only going to get shadows going across one way but in this one picture at the moment and before I uploaded it we had uh, two kind of shadows coming down. So I want to show you how we can get rid of that. Now you would think that initially all we'd have to do would be maybe use something like the, the healing brush or the, the clone stamp tool in Photoshop. And I want to see the kind of effect that that gets because if we just zoom in we can see that this road surface, which is actually um, a little sort of farm track near where we live, where me and my wife went for a walk, we sort of grabbed this shot because I thought it would make a perfect uh, floor for this picture. But we can see that it's, there's quite a lot of detail in the floor, a lot of texture, little bumps and stones and things like that. So if I went and tried to use my uh, clone stamp tool, let's say, and I'm only going to be using maybe, I don't know, 20% of the strength of it. We've got the opacity down to 20%. And if I just sample here and start kind of cloning this area away, although initially you'll think that, yeah, that's doing not, you know, it's, it's actually getting rid of the, the shadow. If we zoom right in, we can also see that it's getting rid of the texture. And that's what we don't want. So we can see that the shadow goes, but the texture's gone as well. And if this is to be realistic, that's not really the way that we need to go with this. So that ain't going to work. You maybe might want to make a selection using lasso tool and uh, playing around with your curves and things like that. But you know what? There were so many ways I tried to get rid of it. None of them worked except for the tutorial the technique I'm going to show you now. Now this technique is normally done on uh, beauty retouching, but there's a thing about Photoshop, we, not every technique has to have one use. You know, it's always worth experimenting to see what else you can do with it. And as it happens, a technique that's great for getting skin tone to match on a beauty retouch works fantastic in this particular image here. So how do we do it? Well, all we need to do is really simple. All we need to do is to look at what we've got in front of us. We've got a picture. Now, what is this picture made up of? Essentially, it's made up of two bits, the color and the content. So how about if we could maybe split the picture into two bits, have the color on one layer and the content on another, and then just work on either of those without affecting the other. Now, I hope that makes sense, but I'll show you what I mean. Here's how we can split the picture into two parts. All we need to do is press Command J on our keyboard twice, one, two. And that way we're going to get a duplicated copy, two in fact, of the background layer. Now the first layer here I'm going to call Colour. Oops. Uh, C-O-L-O-U-R. And the next one we're going to call Content. Okay, so now we've done that, the first thing I'm going to do is turn off the content layer and just concentrate on the colour layer. Because all I want to do, I'm going to need to zoom in on this here. I'm going to add some blurring to this. We're going to go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian, or Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to add just enough blurring so that we kind of remove the, the look of the content. So we can't really see it, but we're getting predominantly color. Now, this is a fairly high-res picture. I think I've taken it down to about 160 uh, pixels rather than 240, just for speed, really, when we're working through the tutorial. But I'm going to take the radius... I'm going to say something like 14. Let's see what 14 gives us. So we can see when we sort of look at the preview here, if I just tap on this area here, we can't see the texture because before we can, and when we apply that Gaussian blur, 
the texture's gone. So we'd always see now is color. So I'm just going to click OK on that. That's all I need to do for the color layer. So for the content layer, let's now make that active. We'll click on it and then click on the eye. So that's now become active as well. There's a couple of things we need to do to the whoops, a couple of things we need to do to the content layer. And all that is, first of all, we're going to go to image adjustments, and at the very top there, we're going to choose brightness and contrast. Now we need to make this initially a very, very well, desaturated, very low contrast picture. And we can do that with this high res picture. We'll just deal with the contrast and we'll take that down to minus 50 and click OK. So we can see that is quite a low contrast. The next thing we're going to do is go to filter, other, and use the high pass filter to really start to get the high pass filter to work on the texture within that picture. And the only thing we need to remember here is the radius, we'll use the same radius as what we did when we initially blurred the picture for the color layer. And I think we did 14, so we'll choose 14 again. And the final thing to do is just change the blend mode of the content layer to, we'll go for a linear light. So now, let me just zoom out just a little bit. We can see, although we've made these two adjustments, when we turn them both on and off, we see no effect on the picture whatsoever. Okay, but there is a difference. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just work on the color layer. So if I just click on the color layer, and I'm going to do my retouching on a, on a separate layer for that. I'm going to click single layer like that, and I'll just call layer one. I'm going to call that layer one. I'm going to call that the, we'll call it shadow, because that's what we're going to work on. And now all I need to do is zoom into where the shadow is. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to use my clone stamp tool by pressing S on my keyboard. And again, I'm going to set the opacity to 20%, keep the flow at 100. And where it says the um, current and below, we've got current layer, current and below, all layers. Just make sure that we're selected on current and below. That's all we need to do. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to sample some of the color, say, about here. And I'm just going to keep dabbing. I'm not holding it down. I'm just going to keep dabbing. So I'm dab, 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 dab like that. Just keep pressing it and building it up. Obviously, the more times we go over one particular area, that 20% opacity is going to build up. So it'll go 20, then 40, 60, 80, and 100. So then we get the full effect. But I'm just kind of dabbing it around now just to remove the shadow, just so that we can get rid of it and then see what it looks like. So I'm kind of sampling now. I'm not just sticking in the one area. I'm sampling just beneath the part of the shadow that I want to remove, like so, and we'll sample there, and just keep going. So there's loads of presses. It's, you probably, you might even be able to hear me pressing down on the old uh, Wacom tablet a few times here. One thing as well, which I didn't mention, one thing I always do with this one is, if we look at the top, we've got aligned here. Now, what I don't want to do is, just in case I, when I'm removing this, uh, shadow and I, I sort of make a few dabs that go a quite a stretch a little bit. Uh, I don't want the align to follow where I go because if I'm working, let's say near the near the boot here, and I select this area here and I come across, it's then going to start sampling a little bit of the boot on there as well. So I just tend to use for this particular technique, I'll leave aligns turned off. So we'll just carry on working a little bit more over here, like so. And obviously, I'm just doing this quick just to give you an idea of the kind of thing you can do because this, this is really something I wouldn't want to be doing in Photoshop because I always talk about spending your time in Photoshop being creative as opposed to corrective, but we're being corrective today, so don't necessarily have to worry about it too much. We try not to do it as often as this, but there we go. So there we go. Right. Now, if I just uh, zoom out and we can see that when we turn that on and off, the shadow's gone, but the big thing about this is, if we zoom right in, we can still see the texture. So those stones, those bumps and everything is still there, unlike before when we used the clone stamp tool on its own. So if I just put all those now, I'm going to put all these layers here into a group, pressing Command G to turn them on and off. And I'll just show you just one more time quickly again. Let's just click on the background layer and we'll duplicate it. And I'm just going to use the clone stamp tool on its own without using this technique, just to do the same thing. So I'm doing the same thing now as before. Dab, 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 like so. Just exactly the same thing. But obviously I'm just doing it as you would traditionally. I'm not using it on this color layer, like when we split the picture into two, the color and the content. But we can see straight away the difference. Look, there's no 
detail in there. There's, we're missing loads of information, texture, and whatever. Because if I turn that, the one we've just done there, where we separated it, this one in the group here, we can see the difference. That's the clone stamp tool on its own, and that's the technique where we actually split the picture into two. Massive difference. And like I said, this is something that people uh, traditionally would do when they're doing retouching on, on beauty retouches. Just to give you a quick idea, now I think I've got an action set up for this technique over here. So let's just have a quick look in my actions. Yeah, here we go. Just click like so. So now we've actually got these layers already set up. So I'm now working on the, we'll call this the retouch layer. We've split the picture already into two parts, the color and the content. Uh, and the kind of thing we could do, we might have a, a female model in front of us now that's maybe got like a bra strap mark where we have the red in. We can remove that exactly the same way. Uh, but here, let's say on a collarbone, just to give you an idea where we've got this different kind of skin tone and texture and color here. If I now press my clone stamp tool again at 20%, and I'm just going to sample underneath the shadowy part here of her collarbone, and we'll just do a few strokes. And we'll do under this bit here. This is something that you're going to take a bit of time doing, but it works absolute wonders when you come to removing uh, bra strap marks and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so I mean, you're taking your time doing that, but just to give you an idea how quickly it can remove and start to get skin tone and colouring to matching across the rest of the picture. Okay, so there you go, that's it, that's the exclusive video for the newsletter sign up. So, uh Thanks a lot, guys, and I'll see you next time.